To begin your back wax, get your client comfortable on the couch and start to prepare the area. I find it much easier to ask your clients to loosen the trousers so you can tuck either a towel or some paper in to protect their clothing. Firstly cleanse the area with some blue lotion. This is a good product to use as it will help you to cleanse the skin, cool your client down before you start the waxing and it allows you to check the direction of hair growth and have a general analysis of the skin before you begin your waxing. The next step is to apply a little bit of oil. I use the jasmine oil from Perron Rigaud. You only need a few drops of oil to be added to the area, so just make sure that it's evenly distributed on the area. If you feel you've applied too much, then just take a piece of tissue paper and blot the area before you start waxing. I always start my back wax by clearing the centre. I find it much easier to work with the side areas once I have a clean section in the middle where I can lead my wax onto. This is really helpful if you have a client who may be very hairy. Only apply the wax on the areas that you can easily reach and never wax around corners. The shoulders on the hairline will be much easier to wax later when you can ask your client to sit up. I generally start from the side furthest away from me. Here I am using Mojito Strip Wax from Perron Rigaud. As you can see it's a very fluid wax and nice and easy to apply. With a good quality wax you can generally speed wax. This means you can cover a whole section and then go back and remove with your paper strips. A good quality wax will not set up and will enable you to remove it easily. Keeping the skin nice and taut, remove the strip wax with the paper strips and try and work in a methodical manner from one side to the other. This will be much easier and you will find that you won't get your gloves in a sticky mess with wax. Remove all of the wax thoroughly. Don't overload the paper strips. When you feel there is enough wax on them, just replace it with a clean strip. As with all of your waxing treatments, it's always worth checking with your clients exactly how far they want you to wax their back. I have clients that have so many variations, so when they come along for their waxing, I always check exactly what they want. One option doesn't always suit everybody.
Once I complete the sides, I can then check if there are any random hairs a little bit further down, where I can now reach them much easier, and apply wax and support the skin whilst I remove these hairs. Repeat this step on the other side so that you've completed the back wax. At this point I ask my client to sit up. It's much easier to access and support the skin. You may need to cleanse and apply a little bit more oil before you continue. For the hair on the hairline, I prefer to use a non-strip wax as I find this hair can often be much tougher and stronger. Most guys shave or trim this hair when they have a haircut. The number of strips of wax you need to apply will vary from client to client and will depend very much on how much hair is there. Also you may find that some clients don't want this section waxed, so again it's always worth checking before you start. The hair can grow in various directions, so just check and follow the correct principles. Removing hair in these areas is a lot more painful, so ensure that you apply pressure to the skin after removal to quickly ease any discomfort. Using strip wax, you can now easily wax the top of the shoulders as you have much better access. Check with your client how much hair they would like removed from the upper arm. This varies from client to client. You may find it helpful if you have a few options on your price list. This will allow for your clients to have a variety of various waxes. I have some clients that only require a very basic back wax whilst I have others that want everything removed down to the elbow.
I always ask my clients to turn around so that I can wax the front section of the shoulders. This gives a much better groomed look and allows you to blend the hair in better to the chest section. If there are any random hairs on the front of the neck or on the throat, it's quite nice to remove these with a little bit of non-strip wax. This gives a nice tidy finish. You can also complete the front of the upper arm. To blend hair here you can use a variety of different methods. I often use a strip that has some wax on there and just pluck a few hairs here and there which will break the line and give a more natural finish. For some clients if they have a lot of hair on their arm I often use clippers and graduate the hair so it doesn't look so heavy. Once you've completed your waxing and checked to ensure that all hairs have been removed then you need to start the cleaning up process. You can apply a little bit of oil to the skin. This will remove any little bits of wax that you have left behind and helps to remove any stickiness on the skin. I often find that using a clean paper strip will remove any residual wax that the oil has loosened. Always remove oil and never leave this on the skin. I use blue lotion on a cotton pad to remove any excess oil. Then just follow your usual post waxing guidelines and apply a suitable product to the skin to complete the treatment. I often use a combination of refreshing gel and moisturizing milk as the two of these together are very soothing on the skin. Make sure you give your clients suitable aftercare guidelines and explain exactly what they should expect in the next coming days.